Yeah, what is the meaning of single? Pastor was being alone. Single. What does it mean to be single? The word single means whole. You are not half looking for your second half to complete you. You are whole the way you are. Your single is whole, wholeness. Eve was created for the purpose. For what purpose? There was an assignment that God gave Adam. And because of that assignment that God gave Adam, there was a need for a heavenly that will help him to put that and, and that also takes me to one of the one of the long lists to get married. One of the long lists is pressure. Pressure from parents. Pressure from parents. There are angelic, angelic activities. Angelic activities when it comes to finding spouse. Just that just the way there are the money forces, the money forces that it can get involved with people looking for spouse. Don't the way that angels have an assignment, they are also demons on assignment to get up and get up. See, anywhere you see angels walking, you know that demons are looking for how to walk against angels. You are welcome to Eagle Bible Training School. Today you are going to learn something that you have never learned anywhere. I can say we started except those of you who got married here, yeah, you have never learned this one. Okay? This is something very new, very unusual, very uncommon. If you are single, you need this one like your breath. If you are already married, you need it too. And if you are not married, you, are, you don't ever get married, you still need it any, anyhow. You can use it to help somebody who is who needs help. Who needs help. Whatever you learn, you are going to use it to help somebody else. You know, somebody taught me what I'm teaching today. Somebody taught me. I thank God for my, that man that came to teach me the word of God in this city. That man was used mightily to change my life forever. If I had missed that man, I wouldn't be here today. Your destiny is tied to your man of God, the person that God has said over your life. My destiny was tied to my man of God. When I met my man of God, he taught me what I'm teaching you today, and my life changed. Forever changed. Praise God. And because he has taught me, he deposited those things in me. Now I can also deposit in you, so that you can help somebody else. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Some of you, some of you God will use you to touch people. Different lives will be taught by you in the future. Okay? And, and it's what you know that you can teach them. If you don't know, you cannot teach them what you don't know. I, I, I'm not you know that one. If you come to me to, if you come to ask for one, one, uh, one million for me now, I, I, only, I only 15 million. You need one million, I, and, I, I mean, and I have only 15 million. You know I cannot help you beyond that. I cannot help you. I don't have one million. But if I have 500 million, I come to him, ask me one million, you know it's a thing. You get what I'm saying now? So that's what happens with, what, it's what you know that you can teach people. The unfortunate thing is that there are many people, many ministries, where they don't have teaching. And because they don't have teaching, it's not their fault. They don't have teaching. They are trying to squeeze from them what they don't have. Oh God, teach me this thing. Ah, oh, madam, I don't know how. You know me, pastor, you'll be a teacher. No, you cannot. He doesn't have it. That's why, the Bible says, in all you're getting, get understanding. Because that's what we put over in life. What you, you can explain, and during this, this, uh, this uh, teaching, we'll give you time to ask questions. You can ask questions if you don't if you don't want to ask a question uh, uh, if you are not you don't want to stand up you can write it and then we we'll give pass it around pass it around okay you already got the outline okay let's look at just, just quickly look, look through the outline for quickly I will just explain to you what we're about to do say goals for provider counseling goals what is our time to achieve what is it that we're looking for goals what are, what are our goals the first thing is to provide information. The first thing is open when like I told you before, I said, if you don't have it, you can't give it. If you don't know it, you can't do it. People, I, you know, I've shared it before, I said, it's only marriage that you enter, that you collect certificate before you start the course. Okay? Only marriage. Every school you go to in life, you first of all go to the training, then they give you certificate. Is that not so? Primary school certificate, you want to go in primary school. You didn't give primary school certificate in primary one. 
Is that not so? You finish primary six or seven in those days. I'm only seven. Then you write the exams. Then they give you certificates. The same thing with WAIC. It cannot give you WAIC certificate when you're in Form 1. You have to finish WAIC exam. Finish five years in secondary school. Write your, your GS, yeah, I mean, GCE exam. And then they give you WAIC certificate. That also. Same thing applies to university degree. They, give, they don't give university certificate when you're in Part 1 in university. They give you university certificate when you have finished the course. But when it comes to marriage, they give certificate. You, they give certificate first. Then you say you can do the course. You see what I'm saying right now? So that's why many people fail inside. Okay, and most of us fail because we were not given the we were not given orientation before we started the course. So we are failing. And some who they don't seem to fail physically, but they are actually failed. They are still together, but they are not together. The marriage has already failed. They have, the marriage has failed, but there's no way you can score them because you have already given certificate to them. I think you are aware of that, you are aware of that now. But this one will help you. What we are doing now is, is to prepare you before you bring it to look for certificate for marriage. We want to train you to, first of all, get understanding from the word of God first. Let the word of God train you. I'm telling you, I say what we are what we are getting here is not common. It's not common. Maybe you can go to, let me give an example, you can go to a little bit like 500 churches, or let me just say 1,000 churches in Abuja, 1,000. Maybe you only three or four to teach you. And what they will teach you will not be what you are going to get, this, this one. Only a few churches will teach what I'm teaching you today. Okay? Because my, when my pastor was teaching me, in the Abuja here, there was no church in the whole of Abuja that knew it. Only, only, only him and his wife. And we came under them and we said, teacher, we want to, we want to learn. We were already married that time. We were already collecting certificates certificate <laughs> before we started. You get what I'm saying? So we were there, we don't, we don't get certificate, but we want to learn. So we have to start learning and everything. I never knew that I was learning for one day so I can teach you. God already saw the future ahead and then taught me what I'm teaching you, what I'm going to teach you today. So I don't just keep it to myself. I, keep it, I give you the key so you can use it. Praise God. So the first thing is information. I said to, to inform the couple or proposed couple or anyone who was, any person, that you want to marry, you don't want, 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 want to get married, don't want to marry. Either you're a candidate for marriage or you don't want to get married or you're already married. Eh? On what marriage is all about? The government people don't even know what marriage is all about. They just enter it. To give as much information as possible on different aspects of marriage so that, so that they can be informed and ready. To also help the couple understand themselves and what each, each one is bringing to the, into to the marriage. To discover strengths and weaknesses. To help couples to be realistic about the changes they need to make and the changes they, their mates need to make. You have to know what changes you need to make, what your wife or your husband or your wife to be, your husband to be to make. There are some changes that you need to make before you even get married. If you don't make those changes before you get married, it will be difficult to make the changes after you get married. It will be very difficult unless God, if you are at the mercy of God, you, are, you, have, you find a very vibrant church where the man of God is, or woman of God is teaching you like crazy, then those changes can still, God can still do those miracles. But otherwise, there are some that will be difficult to make again. Most marriages are not working. If you look at an, the outdated census of marriages in Abuja here, most of the marriages here in Abuja, they are not working. They just stay together. Are you aware of that? And when they want to, maybe if they, they give birth, the child, the child wants to get married, they, also, they will call the, 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 the husband, maybe the husband is in a, is in a uh, what is it called? Uh, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, Makodi. They bring the husband from Makodi. The wife is, from, is coming from Bayesa. Then they, we are, they now show the same clothes for two of them. Then they now come, where is the bride, uh, the bride's mother and the, bride, the bride's father? That is it, now the two of them are together. Meanwhile, they don't talk to each other. That day, they were smelling, smelling, smelling. It's camouflage. Just so that they can see that this person that wants to marry, marry have father and mother, and they are wearing them cool. They are not, they are not together. You get what I'm saying? They have, been, they have fallen apart a long time. Okay? When they want to get, when the, when the child wants to get married, they start looking for how to locate either the husband, either the, the, the father. They are trying to locate the father. 
Some we have to go and beg. They beg. Just come and represent us. No disgrace us. This man make no disgrace us now. We don't sew clothes for you. So the man has to wear the, put on the clothes, and they come and stand before say, We are not careful. We'll come out here. No, mm -hmm. So everything is camouflaged. So we don't want to run, you don't want to run your life, your life like that. Is that not so? So we want to get teaching. It's very important for you to get teaching. So it gives you information. Now look at number, number two. It said, eliminate surprises. When a counseling will help to minimize, minimize, or eliminate as many surprises as possible on the pending marriage. It helps the couple to become realistic in their expectations. Okay? The, this in turn will reduce matter conflict in the future. Couples are relieved of fears, anxieties, secret, secret doubts, and questions concerning marriage. You see, there are issues that you, you, you can deal with now before you enter the marriage. You can deal with it now. You will have been taken care of. You have already, already crossed the bridge. So when the problem comes up, you just laugh because you, already know the, you, already, you have been trained. Okay? Now look at it. But number three, provides Christian, uh, Christian growth. Counseling provides an opportunity for Christian growth. In preventive counseling, different type, uh, topics or uh, lessons are taught so that there's, there's increased learning and knowledge. You, we teach on anger, how to manage anger, how to process your anger. When you are angry, how do you process it? Do you know, do you know that you want to process anger? You process it. So it doesn't become the problem. You, you, can, you, you process anger, how to process your anger. We we'll give you the stage by stage of how to process anger. When anger is coming, how do you deal with it? Well, what are the telltale signs of anger? The continence of the face. How do you speak? They, they will teach you those processing. How, to, how do you process the anger so it doesn't become, it doesn't get full blown and becomes a problem? I'm, I'm just giving you anger now. There are many things we teach on sex, many things that you, that you, that you, that you, you need to deal with. Now, I said uh, uh, growth, Christian growth. I said the couples are, ex, are ex, exposed to a lot of information, instruction in the Word of God, so that at the end, of, at the end growth in the Lord is inevitable. You cannot but grow. Spiritually, because of the training you've gotten. Because we are using this, this is the manual. We have another book that we are trying to we are trying to order them. We have not been able to get them yet. Oh, is it available now? Before you said, please let me get some, some of them. Let me bring some, some of them. Before you, we show you the book, you, that, that's the book we use as a manual book here in the church. If you are getting married in this business center, you must do that. You must do that uh, that uh, that you must do that. Do, do that, do the course, and do, do get the book. We use this book as a book. This is a rule book. Okay, this one is a rule book. This Bible is a rule book, but the, the, we have another notebook that we, I mean, another uh, textbook that we use. The textbook has scriptures inside. So you take it home as own work and go and do it as own work. Okay? The textbook is not free. We buy it. This one is not free. It's free. You are not paying anything for this one. But if you need the textbook, you have to buy the textbook. Is that clear? So it, they call it before you, they'll they get, get a copy now. Before you say, I do. Before you say, I do. Then come over. That is okay. so, the, so this is it. Now, the, uh, then the, um, number four, providing correction. When the counseling corrects faulty information and thinking concerning marital relationships, it corrects faulty thinking on communication. For example, a good woman never talks. She just shuts up and lets her husband do all the talking. You know, that's not true. Okay? But some people, there are some places where they say women must be quiet. It must not, it must not be hard. That when you go to the prayer council, it will teach you that as a woman you can talk. This is how you are going to talk. This is how you are going to express yourself to your husband. This is how to, when you get married, this is how you are going to communicate with each other. When, you want to, when there's a problem, when there's a conflict, this is how to do it. It will give you the tips on how to, do, how to handle the conflicts. Okay? There are many, if you don't know how to handle how to, how to conflicts, when there's a problem on ground, you just bury it on the ground. You bury the conflict on the ground. You know, you know the snake, the snake. Yeah, you just cover the snake. And make, you know, the, one day the snake do like this. I never die. And it gives out it bites you seriously because you, didn't, you don't know how to deal with the conflict. And when you don't know how to deal with conflict and you can't eat, you can't conflict, you can't eat, can't, can't eat, it's like worms. One day it just explode and the money will break down. You don't know how to handle the conflict. Okay? So now, let uh, us uh, corrections. Corrections are, or, or, uh, for example, another, another example is that, uh, is that uh, in finances, the woman's money is all her, is belong to all, belong to her. Some people, some people are, you want to get married as a woman, your money is your own. It's my money. My money, your money. My, my money, my money. Your, my money, your money. You got what I'm saying now? 
And there's a way to deal with finances when you get married. Based on scriptures. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay? Now look at it. So this is a... Uh, then another example is on sex. Some people believe that women, 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 a wife should not ask for sex. Only the man should ask for sex. There are some crazy beliefs that have been there for years. Okay? Because of the circumstances tradition we have and everything, that you know you need to be corrected. It's supposed, it's supposed to be enjoyed in the, in the marriage. It's supposed to enjoy it. Okay? It's supposed to be fun for both parties. Okay? Now look at it. So number five, provides. Uh, Premier counseling provides opportunity for the couples who made their, made their counselors, I mean, we now, uh, and then we're going to have pastors here, congregational pastors, in future, different pastors will be here. Who are leaders in the church, they get to build a relationship with them. They also get to have a relationship, or at least contact the congregational care pastor. We used to have a pastor like that before, but, you know, there are changes taking place in the church now. We, I'm, I'm taking this, this for now, okay? Now, the group discussions provide an, an avenue where last relationship can be built. With other couples who are going through the other counseling, you go in a group, okay? That way you have family friends who know you and understand you. Family friendship are built by both of you as a couple and individually. You are going to make friends. Family make friends. So that we give room to share. You are having problems, for instance, you, are, you as a couple you can share with this other one. This one, and then you can say, oh, this one will solve it. No, no people not believing in lie. In the church, they believe in lie and they are fighting. Huh? Okay? These friends have gone through the same experience with you. Okay, so they know the truth. They have, they have the same experience. Number, number six, preparation pre pre for ministry. I shared this one before. I said, we'll share what, what we already have now. Now you're going to share with somebody else. We believe strongly that whatever you learn, you should also commit to other people. As you, as you acquire all this information in the preparatory counseling class, you can now counsel people effectively in your, in your care group or cell group or any ministry in which you find yourself. Because of this experience, your marriage will be so good and successful that people will generally come to you for advice when they're in trouble. Okay? That's what we want. If you want to get married and if you're already married, that's, that's what we want. People to come to you. They want to come to me and my wife now for advice. Okay? People, neighbors, everybody from different places who are not members of our church, they come to us because their marriage is working. If one is working, people, God will be letting people to come and to make a meeting so they can get help. People are looking for help. Is that, is that clear? Now look at it. Uh, when they're in trouble. And then plus, singles who are afraid of marriage or afraid of the premarital counseling process can now come to you and all their affairs will be delayed. There are people who don't do this, do this, do this process. They are afraid. Let me not go and get, hear something about this. Say, Marie, make a, me no go, 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 me no So you know that it's for the good of, it's for your good. You do the, the counseling, it's for your good. You will not, you know, there is no fear about it. Nobody's going to force you not to marry or, not, or marry. It's your decision, it's your decision. When you finish this, this training, whether you want to marry that person or not, that's your decision. Our church doesn't force you. Don't mind that one. Mind that one. No, no, no. Okay? Look at it. And then God will, God will place a demand on this information from you. From you. I've just shared that now. More sooner than, than you expect. You will need to help a, a, a couple who will come to you later. Or you may be called upon by the church to help couples who are having problems. Okay? If, if a couple is having problems in their marriage, I can say, okay, go and meet Mr. Lucy and the husband. Let them cancel you. Because I've trained them. Okay? You look at it now. Number seven, wedding procedure. Wedding procedure. People are more concerned about this one more than anything. Do they want to get married? It's wedding, 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 wedding. The wedding day that we have everything. And it's not just the one day. After going through the final counseling process, we explain to you the procedure for wedding arrangement so that you are not left in the dark. Okay, grouping. It's simple procedure. We are familiar with that one on our own before we do any teaching. But we can give you the perspective, God's perspective about how to, how to get ready for your wedding so that you don't get, you don't cure foolish expenses if you want to get married. Now look at the number, and then finally number eight. That's why I'm going to stay for today. I'm going to do some teaching on this one. Now look at it. Primary counseling is a process gathering information. Checking your heart out and your mates out. Mates. To pro propose mate. I can put it on. And finally asking yourself, should we marry? Should we marry? Do I really want to marry this person? Is this really the will of God for me? That's critical. The will of God. Is this the will of God? Okay? Or should I terminate this relationship after the, counsel after the counseling? The purpose of counseling is, is you, see, when you don't come for prenatal counseling after you have gone to pay dowry. Because it's, it's not, it's, you're already married. Okay? You do prenatal counseling before you start doing introduction, I want to marry, or pay dowry, I want to marry you, I want to marry this one. You do it so that you can determine whether this person is going to marry or not. Is that clear? I'm talking about those, those are single now, if you are single. If you are not single, that is not 
If you are still single, you, are, you, are, you believe in God to get, to, have it, to get married, to get married, the process is simple. Look at it. The premarital counseling is meant to prepare you for marriage. Okay? You did you see all those things I've listed to you just now? It's meant to prepare you for marriage. So that it's not that you are paid dowry, they are paying your dowry. Now you are not doing the counseling. Did you get it? You do the counseling first. Then you know whether you want to marry this person or not. Whether it depends on you want you marry or not. Whether it depends on the right person for you or not. Because it, many times when people are courting the, the one another, they, 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 don't, they are blind. Most people are blind when they are courting. And I will talk about that shortly. That's what they call what they call in love experience. It's emotional. You just met that person and he just proposed to you. You can hardly wait and sit down. It's, you can't reason. You can't your eyes like, it's like, star, like a star. You are seeing, you are seeing stars. Okay? So, but Pivana Kazelen will help you and calm you down and show you some of the things. Look at this. Look at this. Look at it. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Do you want to go ahead? You want to go ahead? You still want to go ahead? No problem. Okay? But you know what you are going to now. So, the, uh, the best thing you can do for yourself is, is, to, is to do for, the, for yourself. This time is to maintain an honest and open heart. Did you see that? Did you get that? You maintain a honest and open heart. Should you, should, is, this one, is this the person one going to sit down and, stay, and spend my life with? Be very honest with yourself because if you are not honest with yourself and you lie and you keep lying and you keep lying, when you, keep, when you end up getting married, you will see those lies will come out. And only you will confront those lies. Okay? But honest and open heart is very important. Do not, be, do not be bent on marrying a certain person. You can be wrong. You can be wrong. Or you might have made a mistake. Do not be afraid of making a mistake. Making a mistake. It will be better for you to make a mistake now before you get married than to realize that after you are married, now mistake is too late. I think you get what I'm saying now. It's what they, what they call medicine after death. You get what I'm saying now. A person don't die now, you give a medicine. The medicine, you didn't you're supposed to give him medicine to be alive that time. You didn't give him medicine. That time, the person died now. You're not saying, yeah, make him bring the cops. Put the kamoku in the mouth. Kamoku in the mouth. It's too late. It's very dead. You get what I'm saying? So, it would be better for you to make a mistake now than to just go ahead and marry that person in spite of all the facts and signs that you are seeing. Be honest and don't be desperate. I want to say it. I said, tell your neighbor, be honest. Be honest. And, don't be and don't be desperate. That's it. See, this is very important for where we are going. You have to be honest and don't be desperate. And we'll come to that one shortly because many people are struggling with what we call desperation. They are desperate. Marriage is a lifetime deal. It's lifetime. You don't have to rush it. You don't have to rush it and get it and get the marriage done right now. You do you get what I'm saying now? You don't have to, there's no need for you to rush it. So the key word there is honesty. Honesty is the key word. If you are honest with yourself, and many times once you are honest with yourself, that means you are not deceiving yourself. Is that not so? You're not deceiving yourself. You know that uh, this thing, the way I'm seeing it, the way I'm seeing it, this person, I, won't, I cannot live my life with this person. Okay? When I, before I got married, there were so many people that I wanted to, uh, I, that were candidates. Eligible candidates by their own admission. But God gave me an insight in, out of his mercy. You want to see, it's the mercy of God. You want know to look, this person, if I marry this person, I look at some people and say, even this person, this one, this one will finish me. You gotta say now. I'll say this one will finish me. So I say I can't marry this one. This other one will come. I say this one, this one, this one. I look, I study, I study this one. But I know the kind of person I know, you know, you know yourself. Is that not true? You can pretend for some time, but but when you when you are after some time, the thing will show. This one, I can't, this one cannot stay with me. This one cannot stay with me. There are some that are just say, okay, this one can be friends, but no marriage. This one can be friends, no marriage. 
When I saw my wife, I knew that this was the one. This one is wired to help me. You get what I'm saying now? Help me, help me. Once you, you get to make foolish mistakes, now I'm not saying things cannot change. Don't, don't get me started me now. Okay, don't say, well, talk. I mean, now, as I don't really make mistakes, what do I go do now? If you are in this church, it's not late. Okay? We'll do what we can to, you know, buy carburetor for the engine, injector, new injector. We put in our gearbox. We put in, you know, I don't know if you ever bought old motor before. Old motor. Me and my wife bought old motor. We're going to nearly finish us. We bought old motor. Today is tired. Tomorrow, carburetor. This other one in, uh, is uh, exhaust, exhaust boycott. It's chassis. If it's not engine, it's chassis, tire, battery. You know? <laughs> but if you get a good mechanic who is very wise, you can see, okay, with battery needs to change, tire needs to change, carburetor needs to change, change your, if you are not using a carburetor, you need injector, change your injector, change your gearbox. But I'm finishing everything. Not in the and the carcass. But at least you can, <laughs> you can get new motor inside the old carcass. That's what happens when you get to the wrong marriage and then you find the right church. It's not a hopeless situation for you. you God can help you to rearrange things and put things on that. If that is on one condition, if two of you are willing. I just saw them very powerful. I don't know where it now. If two of you are willing to Tough it out and say, we need help. We need help. It can be done. It can be done. But if there's only one person that's willing, the other person is not willing. You, to you need to go and do, uh, do night VG, dry fasting, and confession, and different things. Okay? For things to change. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, what we're going to begin, number one, the first way we're going to begin, okay, this is the, this is the book. Before you say, I do. A marriage preparation manual for couples. Before you say, I do. Before you enter into marriage. Okay? This is very important as a church. Equal Christian Center as a ministry. When you are single and you want to get married in Equal Christian Center, you have to buy this book. Okay? You buy this book and then you do the own work. The own work is there. Own work. There's own work that you do alone. There's own work you do with your intended person you want to marry. The person you want to marry, if you are, you know, uh, uh, your fiance, fiance. There are some you do together, some you do it separately. Okay? You do the own work. There are scriptures. They are based on scriptures. Okay? They are scripturally based on work. You do them, your uniqueness and acceptance in marriage. Different things that you need to do, and then you you have you need to buy an exercise book. You go to buy an exercise book, and then uh, and then you do the own work. You do the own work is done. Submit the own work as you do it. Submit the own work. Then they will, this will mark it and, and give it back to you. You do another work. Submit and we mark it back. And those of you have done you have done casting here. I think you have. I don't know whether they did it for you. Were used for you that time. Did they use for you? All of you. Those who are who are cancer in this church. So this is there. This is also the hand handbook by the same motto. The matter canceling handbook, okay? By the same motto. Add back. Praise God. This is the handbook. This is the workbook. Workbook. Am I correct? Work, workbook. Or so, 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 workbook anyway. This one you don't do it. Don't write any, don't write on, any, on this one. There's nowhere to write here. Oh, there's where to write. Where to write. Okay. Yeah. That's where to write. Okay. Anyway, this is, this is compulsory. Or anybody that is. And when you when we give you this one to do as if somebody intends to get married, you have to be honest about the answers. We have noticed at least one of the people who cancelled before, Larry, that time. Larry has changed now. Uh, Larry, Larry, Larry did his own, his own his counseling was correct. Okay? He was honest about it. But his fiance that time was not honest about her own. And when we saw that things were no longer working fine. We called them and pointed them to her. I said, look, this thing, eh? I said, see what you wrote, see what you wrote to. No work. See, this marriage is an IQ. If you marry this one, an IQ. <laughs> so 
told, and the two of them were told, we told, we have to show, show, show it, show you, show you. It will just reflect you. And exactly what, what reflected was what happened at the end of the day for the, for the relationship. Okay? Because we, we, the, we, the, 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 you know, the, this thing is like a mirror. This, this kind of is like a mirror. You all see yourself there. Even though that, if you see yourself there, you know you have boil there. You know you're looking for how to, how to rub something for it to go down. But if you don't know that, if you don't know that it's boil, you don't be, as someone, even in some, my place, there was this uh, people, this masculine people that dance. The masculine is dancing and people are laughing. And they don't know, you don't, they, 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 they know, they didn't know why they were laughing. They thought they were enjoying the dancing. Meanwhile, because it is what it is, it has turned here. It has actually turned all his uh, bootlegs were the outside. So he didn't know because you know his fitness was, was dancing, he was dancing. Like so they laughed, okay, he will not do more. <laughs> not knowing. <laughs> he didn't know the reason was because the trouser was already torn. You will not know whether you have a torn trouser until you enter the marriage. But if you are the counsel, you will have seen it. Before you enter, you will have seen it. Hey, so this trouser is going to make a good hotel. Before you enter. Did you see the point now? Good. So we. The first place we're going to begin to begin here number four is number is here. If you are single, trying to get married, or if you are married, you are going to cancel somebody who is trying to get married. The first step, and normally when I do this training, I normally have the, this thing, this uh, my blackboard here. These things here are here. We put them on the board, okay? How to deal with anger? How to process anger? Process, how to process it? How do you process the anger? Are you angry? One of the Key things you are going to deal with when you get married is money. Money, number one. Anger. You got to say now? That one, money, anger, sex. There are some things that are very critical. They are very vital. We, show you, we spend a lot of time on anger here. Yeah. A lot of teaching on anger. Anger is not just only, only once. We do it over. We do it because, because it's destroying relationships. Anger is only relationship. And everybody gets angry. It's how to process it now. That is the, where the question is. Okay, so, but if you get this teaching, it will help you to process your anger. Okay? So this, this, this what is here now, is what, what is in this first part there, summarized here. Okay? This is what I summarized in this place. We first of all begin, let's, we begin first of all, the first place we begin is to look at being single. Singleness versus aloneness. You can be single and not alone. Okay? In other words, being single doesn't mean being alone. The fact that you are single doesn't mean that you are alone. So here, the first, the, the, when we do this teaching, we normally start with, after we do the introduction, we start with what is called wrong reasons to get married. Wrong reasons to get married. We have right reasons to get married and we have wrong reasons to get married. The first part we normally start with is wrong reasons. What are the wrong reasons to get married? And number one on the list of wrong reasons is what they call loneliness. Loneliness. Loneliness is number one. That there is a general uh, pursuit for marriage I a, a thirst, a hunger for marriage because of what people tag loneliness. Because the belief, the, mis, the belief, which is wrong belief, is that marriage will kill loneliness. Which is a lie from hell. Marriage do not kill loneliness. If you, are not, if you cannot deal with it before you get married, then it's going to be worse after you get married. It doesn't kill it. Sometimes you can even aggravate it. You can be married and be more lonely than somebody who's single outside. So there's a difference between single being single and being lonely or alone. And also, that we'll look at that closely this, this tonight. So that you know, first of all, you have to, first of all, that if you are single and you're not yet married, you need to redefine and reevaluate yourself. So that you, you, if you, your pursuit of relationship and everything more, should it be the first thing you pursue. Should I pursue marriage more than any other thing? Should it be my main cardinal pursuit for now? Because see, just like somebody was sharing before I left here, uh, I was this is somebody was sharing on the TV. I think it was Joel uh, Somebody was sharing when I was, I was this, uh, He said, uh, "When you are when you are facing an issue, 
You think that that issue you are facing, once you can solve it, every problem will be solved. Somebody who is looking for money to pay rent, if I can just pay this rent, oh Lord, if I just pay, meanwhile, God wants to build a house for you in the city. God wants to build a house for you in the city. But you are thinking your own concern is rent. God is saying, rent is a small thing. I'm going to build your house. Somebody who's not married say, I don't get married. Oh, Father, have mercy on me. Give me a husband. Make her just marry. See, meanwhile, God has a bigger vision of what he wants to do with your life than just, just one kind of marriage. I mean, we envy people who are married around us. Yeah, maybe they come to our near house and wear the same clothes and you know and then they see them out they are talking to each other hey, honey and oh, all yeah, they say, oh, darling 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 say when will I you know, get to darling me now you got to say now when will I get to honey me right now I mean why we shake it there's no, no honey inside that comb it's just it's just a cup of light there's no more honey inside okay but you now begin to build your life. You are trying to build your life based on what you see, what seems to be working to you. It seems to be working. Meanwhile, if you are patient with God, and you hear what I'm going to share this tonight, God will give you somebody with, who will make life sweet for you. Who's your combi you combine with that person that will make this life so interesting. So palatable. But the, and the, reason, the only reason will be because you are in the center of the will of God for your life. So the first area to identify before you start looking for husband or looking for wife is to number one, first of all, identify that as a single person, you are your being single is not the same thing as being alone. Let me show you a scripture now. Genesis. We, we normally use this scripture for marriage, and people are using it to justify. Looking for spouse at all cost. And, uh, you know, the next spouse, give me a spouse or I die. You know. uh, Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 2. So what I'm doing is a little bit slightly different from what I was trying to do. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Well, well, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Eh? We, are looking, we, are, we are going to read 18 to, uh, to 25. Okay? We have it on the board. If you have it, if you have it, you can underline it in your, in your distance there. See, want to go. And the Lord said, it is not good that, the, that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every, every, every bed of the air and brought them to Adam to see what, what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. So it, Adam gave names to all cattle, to the bears of the air, and to every, every beast of the field. But to, for Adam, there was not found a, a helper comparable to him. So when, I, when you see the word alone, or not alone there, there was the word helper comparable to him. Okay? Number 20, verse 21. And the Lord, called, called, and Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on, on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of, the, one, of the, one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man he made into a woman, and he brought her, see, to, he brought her to the man. You see, this verse 22 is very important. I will still come back there. You see, it was God's business to do this job. Are you aware of that? It was God's business. This is the God angle to it now. God went ahead and did what he had to do. Adam didn't know that he was actually alone. Okay? He didn't even know. But I, I'll come to that one. See, what God did now. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of, out, of, out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become, what? One flesh. Well, we're still going to talk about this one along the line, because once you get married, one of the biggest things that can happen with people who are married is in-laws. In-laws. Attachment to parents. It's one of the, it's, it's one of the, one of the killers in, of, of marriage. One of the killers. Atta undue attachment to parents. Look at it now. Uh, and they were both naked. Look at it now. And, and, and what, look at it. This is very important. But, and they were both naked and what? And the man and his wife and were not ashamed. Your, your spouse will be your closest person to you on earth. 
closest human being to you on earth. Okay? This should be the closest. Nothing to be ashamed of. Transparency in dealings. It's very important. Once there is no trust, any marriage where trust is gone, that marriage is already, is already dying. It's already on its way to a ground. Once trust is gone. So what are, you, have to, you have to now seek counsel to rebuild trust. You know in Nigeria, yeah, we don't seek counsel. We don't, my, 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 the people seek counsel in Nigeria, Nigeria marriages, they don't seek counsel. Until everything just collapse. Once you start noticing that there's no more trust going, no trust in your, your body, you need to start seeking counsel. You're like somebody who is sick, you're having sin on your body. Go and get, go to, uh, go to the, uh, the uh, treatment place and let them treat you fast, 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 fast. There are some sickness that if you don't treat the sickness on time, it becomes too late for the medical people. Is that not so? Not for us, born again believers, not it's too late for us. Okay? But you see, if you are going through any issue in your relationship and you don't see counsel, you, the, and trust is already gone, every other thing will start dying along the line. Once there's no trust, other things are dying. Okay? So, but that's not where I'm going today. That's not where I'm going today. Where I'm going is, is, is a verse, uh, is verse, uh, verse 18. Okay? Verse 18. Where I'm going, where I want to go to this is verse 18 for now. Verse 18 And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Did you see that? It's not good that a man should be alone. So, here, yeah, what is the meaning of single? Versus being alone. Single. What does it mean to be single? The word single means whole. Whole. You are whole. Okay? Singleness means whole. Wholeness. Okay? You are whole. Singleness, singleness means whole. Separate. You are whole. You are separate. Wholeness, complete, separate. And you are unique. It means unique. Singleness also means being unique. I think you see, it's not, it's, not a bad, it's not a bad language now. See, because the way people go single, oh, I'm still single. I'm still single. I'm still single. I'm still single. You can say, well, I'm still whole. I'm still whole. You are not half looking for this, your second half to complete you. You are whole the way you are. You single is whole wholeness. I will look at I will, I will, when I when I finish when I go to being alone. You see, you see the difference now. See, yeah, co compare that wholeness, singleness. The singleness is like you have uniqueness. There's the way you smile. There's the way you talk. Your singleness differentiates from any other person. It's your uniqueness. It's your peculiarity. Your peculiar. The way, the way you walk, your singleness. The way you dress, your singleness. It's the peculiar thing that differentiates from, from other people. And it's not like you have people, they have fingerprints. If, they have, if, uh, if you have a one million people, they have different fingerprints. Everybody has their own fingerprints. In America, they have what they call a number. Where you, if you, once they give back to you, they give you a number. Okay? If you, if you become an American citizen, they give you a number. Anywhere you go to, they just ask you what's your, what's your number. Quack, 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 quack. They type in the computer. If you bring everything about you, the day you are born, your height, your, your, driver, your, your driver license is going to expire, your phone numbers, everything is there. You know, in Nigeria, yeah, there's none of that. God will still take us there in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody do something, we are just, you just take, once, you put, once you put fingerprint, like this, fingerprint, this one, your picture will appear where you are born. If you owe money for rent in Maduguri and you run to Abuja here, once the landlord wants you want to go to a main landlord for, for rent, you just what's your name? What's your, what's your security, security number? Just type, if you're already there that you are owing rent in Maduguri, you didn't pay. If you have been arrested by any police before for any, any crime, it will show. If you have ever, ever been to a jail, it will show. You see, it's, it's your, your singleness, your everything peculiar to you. You are single, you are whole, you are complete. You are unique. It's not a bad thing to say you are single. Okay? You know Jesus was single. Are you aware of that? 
What the apostle was single. But you see, in Nigeria here, we have already bastardized it in. I've bastardized it. And many times because of ignorance. And hear me, hear me, unless you identify, I want to say very powerful now, unless you identify and you are comfortable with your singleness, you're not, you're, not, you're not ready to marry. Unless you first identify and you are comfortable with your singleness, if you are looking for someone to dump yourself on, you're not ready to marry yet. Because if the married person you are marrying has mess. When you carry your mess, join the mess. The stay is things. Now look at it. That's alone now. Let's do alone. When you are alone, you are isolated. The word alone means isolated. Alone means isolated. Okay? You are isolated. Like I, I give an example. There's a scripture I wanted to show you. Of somebody was Leviticus. You isolate a leper. When a leper has a, when somebody has leprosy, you isolate him. Leviticus. Where did I write it now? Leviticus 2. Help me out. All the days we are in the plague. Plague, that's plague of leprosy now. Shall be in him. He shall be defied. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. Can you imagine what uh, Another translation can cause. Look at it now. All this, when, when the, the place shall be in him, he shall be defied, he shall, he's, he's unclean, he shall dwell alone without the, without the camp, shall his habitation be. See, see, the world alone is isolated. You are isolated. You are kept in confinement. It's not, it's not, it's not the same as being single. Alone. This is what... God said it's not good for Adam to be alone. He didn't say it's not good for him to be single. He said to be alone. Because you know what? Adam, the, the aloneness of Adam is that there is no any other human being Adam could relate to. They are only animals. He cannot relate to cows, elephants, lions. They are no human beings. So he was alone. But you see, it's a different scenario now where we are in right, right now. Because you can be a single person, you are not married, and yet you have more fulfillment, more satisfaction than married people. If only you can be the center of the will of God. So you need to get what I'm saying. I'm trying to build a case now. I don't want to rush this. Thing. I want to build a case. Alone is secluded, you are secluded. And another example is Uzziah. Uzziah in 2 Chronicles chapter, chapter, chapter 26, verse 21, verse 21. He said, Uzziah, because he went and born in sin between the house of God, I mean, they, they accosted him and pushed him out, leprosy came on him and everything, and he was shot outside for alone for the rest of his life. He was shot out alone. Okay? Yes. Zachary was a leper on the day of his day. He dwelt in an isolation. Isolated house. Because he was a leper. But he was, you see, do you know many people are treating singleness as if it's leprosy? There's some people in some churches, that's how they do it. It's as if you have not made it, you have not made it yet. You haven't made it. That is despicable. It's despicable. See, because first of all, I mean. It, it, to think that because somebody is not married, is less. I mean, to think, to think less of that person because he's not married. It's despicable. You're not alone. You are just single, but you're not alone. And every person, even those who are married, they have to, they have to be single. But you see, the, the coming together of my life, we look at that one differently. You see, your, your aloneness is bad, but your singleness is good. I'm not sure if you got it this tonight. Your being single is okay, but your being alone is not good. See, if you want to deal with criminals, big bad criminals, you put them in, in a what you call solitary confinement. Solitary confinement. Where they can't talk to anybody, nobody can talk to them. 
They can't, nobody can greet them. They are not related to anybody. Some of them, they break down. Because the way human beings was done, human being was not done to be alone. The human beings was not wired to be alone. We are wired to relate to one another. We are what they call social animals. You relate to one another. And something about a loneliness that is extremely deadly. So Uzziah was shot away. And so it's a sign of somebody who is dejected, rejected, and you're shot out. Secluded. Secluded, alone. They are doing different things entirely. So they're very, very different. Okay? Now look at it. Let's go to, let's go to Genesis now. Let's go to Genesis. Where are we right now? Genesis chapter 2. Chapter about the Genesis that we are about Adam. Genesis that we are I want to show you something here quickly. Two eighteen. We read that two eighteen, and then we are looking at Adam. Was Adam? Was Adam? Uh, uh, Adam? 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 Adam said, "What was he? Was he? What was he lacking as Adam? Did he need a wife?" He didn't even know he needed a wife. Are you aware of that? You know Adam didn't know he needed a wife. He was in fellowship with God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, verse 18. You know, you know, look at look at verse 18 where we are just now. And Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper compatible to him. You see, look at look, stop there now. Now here, here it is. Here it is. Adam didn't even know that he was missing anything. He didn't know. It was God who saw it fit to give him it. Why? Because Adam had communion with God frequently. But you see, the communion with God cannot be 24 hours. There is need for God to create somebody like Adam that can communicate with Adam too. That's why he was created. And the number one, he was created for the purpose, for one purpose. There was an assignment that God gave Adam. And because of that assignment that God gave Adam, there was a need for a help made that will help him to fulfill that assignment. I also say one of the most powerful things in this, in, this, in this message. I don't know if you got it. I'm not sure if you got it. Eh? I don't know if you got it. Too. See, the, 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 the key thing about getting married or pursuing anything in life is, is marriage going to help me achieve that which God's will for my life is? If getting married is not going to help you achieve it, marriage is useless. I I'm not sure if you got it now. I don't know if you got it. You do get it. You do get it. You do get it. I'm still on one point now. Wrong reason to get married. Wrong reason to get married. Wrong reason. Number one wrong reason is loneliness. Okay? Loneliness. Loneliness. That way you are, if you are familiar with that teaching, you have say loneliness. That means you are starting to dump yourself on somebody. You want to dump yourself on somebody. I'm lonely. So come and, come and kill my loneliness. I need a man to kill my loneliness. I'm too lonely. I need a man. Life is too difficult. There are too much problems while I'm ground. <laughs> you get what I'm saying now? That if you don't find your purpose while you are here, and you are thinking that is what you are going to pursue is relationship, to kill it, you are out of your mind. Because that same loneliness will come in a very serious and reformed measure against you. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> See, you know, in those days when we were in our church, we, there was a lady who was counseling a lady. They, you know, they, and we look at it shortly. See, people, people think that marriage will cure loneliness. It, you are going to go to enjoy sex freely and all that kind of thing. They are supposed to be benefits of marriage. But hear me, look, listen, listen. This lady, for two years, there was no second talk between her and her husband. No. They were staying in the same house. They were nothing like that. Two years. You see, when you see what is called strife, strife, even if you are the sexually active person like me, it will, it will smell to you. Is strife is satanic, is deadly. So, and if that woman's purpose now was okay, let me just go, I can enjoy it. Now it's not even there. 
is not there. And I was telling somebody not long, long ago, one of not a member, somebody from outside. When they decide to see my grandma for cancer, is begging the man, please, won't you sleep? I sleep with me. Ah, this one. He's not interested. You see, the zeal is gone. If the purpose is to enter the marriage, which I just put my head inside, which I just put my head inside, wait. Don't put your head inside yet. Listen to this teaching. Okay? It's very important for you. Listen, don't, 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 don't enter yet. You know, you're going to get surprised. With. See, here, so the number one thing is loneliness. It doesn't cure it. So you are writing down now, marriage will not cure loneliness. It's only staying in the will of God, it's in the will of God that can help you. And you can be in the will of God and be single and still be fulfilled. It's not what he said, listen, I'll share, I'll share it. He said, ask yourself if I don't ever, if you are single, if I don't ever get married, will I be happy? That's the question you have to say. If I don't ever get married for the rest of my life, will I be happy? Because some people have said that they have put a pause on happiness until they get married. Because, it, see, as long as you magnify something, that will become big your life. If you magnify marriage, it will become big. That everything you see, you see, every, yeah. I mean, that was me and my wife, when I formed church, we went to attend a meeting somewhere. Oh no, I was one, I, I went alone. It was a men's, men's meeting. But I, you know, one of our, one of our, like somebody said to me, spiritual synonymous said to me, was a lady. We were, we were together there. Because he said, see, he see, but also, see man. <laughs> he said, see man. As far as concerned, look at men. I can't just get one of these ones. You see what I'm saying? And you see, the perspective is wrong because the, all these ones are moving around that you see there like this. If you carry one of them, See, 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 and it's not God has given you the person. You're already finished. Listen now. There are many bread nights I'm talking to you this morning. They will never fulfill their ministry in the, in, forever again because of their marriage. The purpose of which they came here on earth, that God put them here on earth, the reason why God gave out of them will never be achieved. Never again. They will die without their potentials. And the only reason why it's not been done is because they got married to the wrong person. They found themselves a spouse. Not that God carry a, a Eve now to say, take. They went by themselves and take. Not they wait for, I know people for God. Take, come, marry me. I do you see the problem now. People come around, 10 reasons, 10 ways to get married before December. Put this one there, put pancake, put this other one, put this other one. It doesn't work. Look at it. Wrong reasons. Wrong reasons. But you're the only one. Let's just see what, how, many, how, many can cover, how many can cover today. Look at it. Number one, number, number two, number two, pregnancy. People want to get married so they can give birth. And then, or some people, some people get married because they had sexual intercourse with somebody foolishly and they got pregnant. And they now want to use the pregnancy to marry the person. There are some who deliberately get pregnant for the man so they can hook the man. Huh? They do it. Now, I mean, you do it, you're actually a fool. And you don't know your worth. You are cheap. You're cheaping yourself, even though God finds you good and shed his blood for you, but you are cheaping yourself. You're cheaping yourself because now you are using pregnancy to hook the man. It's human wisdom, and it will always backfire. It will boomerang. It will boomerang. I've seen it in Abuja here. Not just one self, I've seen it. People use pregnancy to hook people. And then destroy it. The marriage destroyed. It didn't work. It worked for some time, so after I went, you know, there's a way that things can work for some time. Look at it's working. You know, the worker seems to prosper. But the worker, they seem to prosper, but it doesn't last. 
It doesn't last. The postman or the worker doesn't last. In fact, you know, the psalmist said he was envious of them. He said they didn't have any problem. They had plenty of money to spend. They until he came to the house of God and he saw their end. Oh, like grass, they wither. You don't have any money now, but at least you have Christ. You, have, you are in the good church. You are in the word of God. You still have future. If you are patient. You are patient. Then you have only gary. Drink it. Lay under the gary. Drink the gary and worship God. Until God begins to bring chicken to your house. Oh, yeah? Bring chicken. Bring uh, what is it called? Turkey? Oh. <laughs> you got what I'm saying now? You wait or the, 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 the gary first. God will look at, enter. They are patient, you are with God, they are in Christ. Did you see the point now? So they do it, they use pregnancy to hook people, bam. I'm pregnant for you, so marry me. And so they say, because I, I want to marry her because she's carrying my baby. Two fools. <laughs> so they're about fools. See, first of all, I will talk about that now. Look, we'll talk about these children quickly. Surely now. It's not just bathing children. It's not just about bathing children. It's not about, you see, giving birth to children is, is serious. It's a serious business. See, there, there are many people right now who are desperate because they want to get married because they, are, they, are, they have uh, somebody who already got married, had uh, two children. They are uh, somebody that was, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, in secondary school, he's got married. He has uh, three, three children. Another one got married and had uh, five children. Even one, he one has uh, two children in nursery school. The other one is in primary seven. The other one, this other one. And uh, I never even get uh, married. When I go marry, I will go. And then, this is ridiculous. People who are having, looking for only for marriage for ridiculous reasons ridiculous reason that is completely against scripture. The, I hear me, I say, I, I will see, repeat again, I say, assignment. Your assignment is what determines whether you need a spouse or not. And if you are, if you are in your assignment and you are pursuing your assignment, the spouse will show up. Not by your own effort. Let me show you something quickly here. Before I go on to the wrong reasons. Let me see you in Genesis. I want to wait until, but I, let me just quickly show you. I will, I will still do something next. Genesis chapter, chapter 24. Verse 1. Assignment. Assignment. It's not the seeking. You must not seek husband. Don't seek husband. Seek Jesus. And seek is a sign for your life. Seek is a sign. What is is a sign for your life? See, you see, this thing, this, like this, is my teaching now. If you want to go to where they are doing marriage seminar, I'm sorry, single seminar, where they are doing, they are getting husband after five hours. The people will not like it. You will not like this kind of message. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not the kind of message they want to hear. <laughs> that's the kind of message they want to hear. They are joking that seminar five hours. Three people won't marry me. This is not say I go marry you. I don't say I go marry you. Now it's a question of choice. Will you marry me? They don't say you marry me. I don't say you marry me. There is now it's a question of choice. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> ah, you are so deceived. It's amazing. Let me leave my way. Where 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 that where that's a good one. Chapter what? Eh? 24. <laughs> uh, uh, 24. One to. We're going to read. You see, one to read. It's quite some lengthy reading, but it's worth it. Hmm? It's, very, it's very interesting. Now Abraham was old, when, uh, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that they had, please put your hand under my thigh. And I will make you swear by the Lord, the, the, God, the, the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. You cannot just marry anybody. I, you can't just marry anybody. See, this, people make the mistake when they want to get married. They don't receive, they don't eat to reason. They don't eat to reason. They just want to marry. Just marry. You might just marry. 
It's not just as if this Abraham is a father in the faith. We want to see example here of how he chose what he did to choose wife for his for the for the for his son. His, his son, that is the son of promise. Do you know you are a child of promise? Tell anybody you are a child of promise. Good, good. But he said, he said don't, choose, don't pick any one of these people I'm seeing around there. Anyone from this area. That in other words, don't go carry on believer for my picking. Uh, on no account should you go and carry on believer for my picking. Look at it now. See, look at it. Verse 4. But you shall go to, any, to my country and to my family and take a wife for my, for my, for my son, Isaac. Okay? And the servant, the servant, this is when Brother Baragin was sharing. He said, he said, when you want to, when he said, what he said, spoke about marriage. He said, he said, don't just marry. Look for somebody with which you can, you of you two of you can fulfill your ministry together. Then build a family together. Build a, build, a, build a family together. Okay? You look for somebody with two of you. Two, you are like, do me and you do this one now. We are fulfilling a ministry. Get somebody, maybe you are you are in the business, you are in uh, working. The people, two of you can build a ministry together. Not okay, but just pitching, just pitching now. Look for somebody that is going the same tangent with you. Who wants to build life with you? But we shall go to my do, go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. And the, and the servant said to him, Perhaps the woman will not will not be willing to follow me uh, to this to this land. Must I take must I take your son back to the land which, from which you came? No 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 don't try it. Don't try it. Abraham said no. Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not do not don't do that kind of thing. God, God has to leave that place. The Lord God of heaven, who, 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 who took me from my father's house, hmm, praise God, and from the land of my family, and who spoke to me and, and swore to me, saying, To your descendants I give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. Hmm. Did you see that? See, underline the word angel here. There are angelic, angelic activities. Angelic activities when it comes to find a spouse. Just, that, just the way there are demanding forces, demanding forces that it gets involved in people looking for spouse. See, when we began this ministry, there, there some demons you look for some people and hook them with some, some, some of our, our people. Some demons hook some wives. And they never seek this, this, this means they never wipe out. Just the way that angels are on assignment, there are also demons on assignment to get out of get trouble. See, anywhere you see angels walking, you know that demons are looking for how to work against angels. There's one purpose that Satan wants to achieve is to thwart. What I mean to thwart? I mean to destroy God's work. To thwart it. To destroy it. Sink it. See, this is, a, this is an angelic involvement with looking for a spouse. You see, your, your angel needs to be involved. Concerning being the right person to cross the path, you can't do it by your own ability. Anything you do in your ability is like Ishmael. You get Ishmael husband or Ishmael wife. Ishmael husband, Ishmael wife, they will sort of torment you. Your life will be or in a disaster, and if you are not careful, you may lose your life. The price of carrying Ishmael is too much. Look at it. Where does stop now? Verse. Angel. Hmm? Verse 8. Okay. And if the man is not willing to follow you, then you will be released from the from the oh, this old. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under under the under the thigh, under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. This, this man is a lifeline for Abraham. Why is he having to ask him to swear? He has never had to do that kind of thing before. You cannot say, ah, say why? You know, you know, you know, just to marry. Why are you so serious about it? I have to swear that I will, not, I will go and get somebody from the ah, ah. Why are you so serious? Abraham knows that once you marry the wrong person, you are finished. Abraham knows the significance of getting the right spouse. Look at it. And then verse, uh, verse, uh, verse ten now. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed. For all his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nao. That's Abraham's father. That's Abraham's father's name. Grandfather's name. And he made his 
camels nailed down outside the city by a well of water at evening time, the time when women, when women go out to draw water. Then he said, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. You see, he's praying now. This is good servant who's praying. He's supporting the master. He's talking to God now. He's talking to God about the right spouse. He says, no matter what. After Abraham said, I ain't, God said, yeah, we'll do it. He was still doing his own prayer. Because they know that whatever will happen to Isaac, either to finish him or to, his future is dependent on who he marries. Everything in life is going to be dependent on the person that you yourself you, you, you with. Behold, look at the number 13. Behold, here I stand by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be. He's talking to God now. He's talking to God now. He's, talk, he's talking to God now. He's talking to God. He said, let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let, let down your, your, your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant, Isaac. I don't know why you enjoy this, this reading. You have shown kindness. You have shown kindness. And I know, I know, so, so I see. And, and by this, by this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. He's talking to God now. He's talking to God. Okay? Okay. And verse 15. And it happened. God had, God had a prayer. And it happened before he had finished speaking. Kandebo Shakata. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. This is a godly wife now being provided. A godly wife is now about to meet a godly husband. This is going to be an, an unusual marriage in the world of that land. If any of you have not yet married here, we want you here as pastors of this ministry. We want to have the finest. We want to have somebody with you two of you can fulfill your ministry. It's not how long it takes to get it for God to meet that person. It's you just patiently waiting for God and let him do the job. Look at it now. Uh, where did I stop now? 15, eh? Good. Okay. And it happened before he had finished speaking. That behold, Rebekah who was born to Bethuel, son of Micah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, Came out with okay now it's Abraham's brother. Came out came out came out with her with with, with, with a picture on her on her shoulder. That's why you need to marry brothers, not unbelievers. Now verse verse sixteen. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her, and she went down to the well and filled her picture and came up. She didn't go there to the well look for husband. She was just doing her work. Verse seventeen. And the servant ran to meet her and said, "Please let me drink a little water from your pitcher." So she said, drink my Lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down on her hand and gave him a drink. You know what I'm You know you know be man. Maybe you find yourself now. You know be man. You know you know messing me. Yeah, maybe be woman. Look at it. I want you. Look at it now. Verse 6, verse 18. Don't disturb me. So the sister, she said, drink my drink. Drink, my Lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down on her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw you, listen to this, I will draw you water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Somebody did, did a, this, a, an, a, a, a study on this thing. I forgot how many, how many buckets a camel, a camel drinks. How many buckets? And he brought several camels. I don't know maybe he did up to 10 different big, big buckets. They have to keep drinking, this one drinking, this one drinking. You know, they come in with water. <laughs> they can drink water for, se for several weeks. They are traveling, they no water. They want to drink, that's what they're using. So when they see the water, they, they are licking it. They are licking it, they are licking it. And this guest, they're going to do water for all the camels. If the camel takes one, two, two buckets each, Imagine how many people like, if you are, if you are in the house, about 10 cameras there, you are, you are, you are putting about, about, about two, two, two buckets, there, about 20 buckets. The, she wasn't as if, Oga, I don't tire. You be, be man, make a door right for camera yourself. I may say, you come here. No. Look at it now. Where does it stop now? 19. Okay. Now and then and then uh, and then and then uh, I withdraw water for for your comments. Also, they, they, they have they, uh, and they, they have finished drinking. 
Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back, ran back to the way to draw water, and drew for all his camels. For all his camels, drew water for all of them. Powerful. Did you see that? For all his camels. And the man wondering, look at it, and the man wondering, no, 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 what else? No, no. And the, uh, there was 21. And the man wondering at, wondering at her, remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made this his journey prosperous. This is the first place where I see a prosperous journey, not journey message. The first place in the Bible where I see a prosperous journey, not journey message. Prosperous journey. Okay? So it was. Look at it. So it was verse 2. So it was when the camels and had finished drinking, that the, man, that the man took a, go, a golden uh, nose ring, weighing half a shekel, and two bracelets for, for a wrist, weighing ten shekels, this is pure gold, of gold, and said, whose daughter are you? Tell me, please, is there room in your, in your father's house for us to lodge? You see, he didn't come, he came with all his, 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 his man was rich, Abraham was rich, rich. Kameh was like a limousine that time, limousine. That's what they would only, that was a limousine, he, had, he came with cars. So she said to him, I am the daughter of Bet of Betuel Mecca's son, whom she brought to Nahor. That's Abraham's senior brother. As you know what I know. Moreover, she said to him, We have both straw and feed and, and feed enough and room to lodge. That's a good woman. That's a godly woman. That's, that's the kind of woman we want for our children. Oh, Father, help me Lord. Yes, character. Women that have character. Our sons, they must never marry one woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, help me. Help my wife. Help us, Lord. These children, don't let them make mistakes, Lord. Because we have done a lot, we have done, done our best to try to train them. May they not come out, this Jezebelity, may they not come there across their path in Jesus' name. Now look at this. See, Abraham is, Abraham is the passion to have the right person. Your, everything in your life will be, it will be defined by if you went and made wrong decisions. Look at it now. Right there, stop now. 20 what? 25. Moreover, she said to him, okay, now, okay, 26. So, I'll go to 26 now, okay. Then the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. Kandebo, shaka, talaba. He who finds a wife obtains favor from the Lord. Kandelebo, shaka, talaba. It's time for worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now. See, I don't know. I know it's the devil anyway. Some people, when the way some men go and carry something, we know see. When you don't see, you cannot see. And those of them now, now they are already out. Some of them out of the ministry. Their ministry is already destroyed. Look at it now. Verse uh, 27. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, God of my master Abraham. Hallelujah. He's worshiping now. He's worshiping now. He's worshiping now. Blessed be the Lord. Kandelebo Shakatalaba. The Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy. Hallelujah, Jesus. And is true towards my master. As for me, hallelujah, Jesus. being on the way, the Lord led me. You are spirit led. You are, as many as I live, as you go to the you are spirit led to your right spouse. You are not just single. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are spirit led. Look at that, look at that. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. brethren. So the young woman ran and told her mother's household these things. Now Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban. That one like money, where, where? And Laban ran out to, to, to the man by the way. When he has it, the man gave money. So it came to pass. Look at it now. When he saw the, the, the nose rings and the bracelets on his on his master, on his on his sister on his sister's wrist, and when the, when he heard the words of his sister's Rebecca, saying, Thus the man spoke to me, that he went to the to the man, and there he stood by the camels at the other way. And he said, Come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand out outside? For I have prepared the house and the place for the camels. The man knows he don't get without better in law. But I love all land. Praise God. Now see, this scripture is loaded. Number one, Rebecca was not such a husband. Rebecca was not searching for husband. 
Rebecca was diligent in the assignment that, he, that God has placed in her hand. Your assignment is to go fetch water, feed these uh, people at home, get water to take care of your, this thing there, of the, the family. Your assignment was to do that, Rebecca. That's your assignment. Forget about husband. Leave it to God. Leave it to God. He wasn't looking for us. She wasn't looking for husband. She wasn't interested in, in, in And she wasn't looking at the man. Maybe he may not marry me. And there, it never crossed her mind that in the course of doing good and doing the best in, in, the, in the kingdom, that God was going to look, for, look, look around for somebody that will partner with Rebecca and with Rebecca, with the two of them will do, will do more and fulfill the will of God here on earth. It was not in our mind. You see, hear me, what I'm saying tonight is this. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above and not on things beneath. How little regard for the things of this world. How little regard for the things. How little regard for... The search for husband. People are looking for husband at all costs. They want to get husband. They want to bump picking at all costs and everything. Let God do his job. Stop doing God's job for him. Because we are making a poor show of it. You are not doing a good job at it. You are making a poor show at it. You are not doing a good job at it. Set your mind on this above, not this minute. You see, and I'm still not finish this one. Okay, let me let me let, let's just do let's do some. Let's do some now. Not the seven. Wrong reasons. No one want to get married so they can give birth. They can born. I want born. I want born. I go born. I must born. Okay. It's good to born. You see it now. It's very good to born. It's God's way that you, that people born. But you must not make it your primary pursuit. What is this why you want to burn? To burn for what? What do you want to burn for? Again, don't enter primary school. I never enter primary school. What do you want to burn for? What is your purpose for trying to give birth? One to the seven. You see, you see why, why, what is it? What is the use for children here? The use. So one to the seven. And we're looking at verse two. Verse two to the, to the end. Two to five. Under seven, two. Okay? Wrong reason, looking for bond to bond picking. This is this one, this particular particular point falls under a right and wrong reason. Verse 3. Behold, children are hated even the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. The word heritage here means assignment. Another meaning of it, the Hebrew meaning of it is assignment. It means assignment. Heritage means assignment. Assignment. That means you are when you want to give birth to born children, you want to you want to do you want to do one work, one work. Aiki, that's assignment in training children. Okay? God gives you assignment to train children. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of the one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. See what here? Heritage. It's assignment. Children are assignment given to people from God. God gives you children as an assignment to train them. Proverbs. Train your child. You see, it's the most difficult thing to, to do when it comes to raising children is training them. I don't know if you're God has said that now. So, born begin is not a problem. Grace woman, they bump again their road. And you got to say now. Some of them, they are, they are pregnant, they are carrying one there, they are doing another one, and they are crazy. You got to say now. It doesn't, it's not. That's why, this is where many Nigerians are missing it. They are missing it. And, and that also takes me to one of the, one of the long reasons to get married. One of the reasons is pressure. Pressure from parents. Pressure from parents. 
Uh, I was come back there. I was come back there. Pressure from parents. What do you call social pressure from parents, from grandparents, from classmates. But let's do parents now because it's parents only relevant to this, this, this particular one. To this, this speaking issue. The pressure from parents is diverse. Some of them, they want their children to get married so they can, they can use, to, use to brag. Some of them, want that, they want to carry their grandchild. When will I carry my grandchild? When will I carry my grandchild? If I offend anybody, forgive me, oh, make I carry grandchild. They want to carry grandchildren. They want to carry grandchildren. Do they know what it means to train a child? Do you know what it means to what is the meaning of training? Training is not going to school to you know to university. To go to university and get a degree. Uh, MSc, PhD, and then it's just... Mama, I don't know, you are old fashioned. Right, man. PhD, no training. No training. Education is there, no training. You see, the Bible says you train your child. See, when the way we just now say is an assignment, uh, give me verse 4, please. I want to, I want to, uh, verse. Uh, Verse, uh, where that, where that verse 4. Verse 4 says, Arrows and the hand of a warrior. Look at it. Good. When you, when you, when you are training the children, look, you know what they're doing? Uh, um, where is this thing we used to beat drum? Where is it? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, good. So look at it. This is the arrow. Children are like this. They don't come up, they don't come like this. You have to sharpen them. Sharpen them. Sharpen them. Sharpen them. When you raise the children, you are raising them, you give out to them, they are raw. They are in raw form, nothing. They don't have any plan for life other than to cry, eat, and poo poo, and that's all. No plan. They don't want to go any, they don't want to do anything, they don't want to brush their teeth. They don't want to go to bed on time. They want to watch old video. They want to watch bad cartoons. You want to sit and walk at 20, 12, 12, 12 minutes, midnight. Mommy, please, if you love me, let me watch it. Nah, nah, okay, 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 you watch it. You are a foolish mommy. You're not training the child. Training is putting God number one in love with the children and making sure that what they watch, what comes out of their mouth, and their actions line up with this book. This is the rule book for your children. You are making sure that you are investing in good Christian materials for them. You are training them to be in church. You are training them to read their Bible. You train them to open their Bible in the morning and not just wake up and hit the road. You are training them because if you don't train them, they will be destroyed. Unless there is a miracle that takes place in the future. They are sure to be wiped out. They will be going to end up the children around. Master's degree. My, my, my first daughter had MSc, PhD. What about... Bible HD. Very academic. <laughs> hey, fool. You have not trained them. So if you train them when they are young, Bible says when they grow old, they will not depart from it. Our son who's studying, studying, studying in the UK, he's studying in the United Kingdom. He's staying alone in his flat. If he wants to have sex 24-7, not nobody go to the top him. He keeps his money in his pocket. He has his bank account. He has his bank account. He, if he wants to lie to collect money from us, nothing will stop him. If he wants to go to a nightclub in the United Kingdom, there are nightclubs that are waiting for him like crazy. He's a young, tall, fine-looking man. Nightclub needs him. But he knows that the word of God has already predicted deep into his spirit. 
that even his neighbors, his neighbors, when we went to visit him, when we go to the US and we went to the UK to see, when he went, went shopping with him, they are then um, unbelievers, Muslims who are who are selling things, they are Lebanese and everything, who are there, they come one of them call us says, This is your son, you have a good son. Unbelievers are witnessing. This boy is different. He said, This boy is different all of them. It's just people who really know normally. He is different from all of them. He's not living in the same flower with him. Not, but he's watching them. He's watching them come and say, what He knows that he's watching them. This is different from all of them. The training from the beginning, from when I used to beat him, he must not work that cartoon network. Can't wait. Who works cartoon network? Who works cartoon network? Who works cartoon network? No, be me, no, be me, you must confess. Help me, <laughs> Training. Boundaries. You can't cross there, you can't cross there, you can't watch this, you can't watch that, you can't watch this, you can't watch that, you can't watch this. I'm sharpening them so that they can stand against Satan at the gate. When you give them the training that is necessary, See, my parents didn't know what I know, but they did their best when I was young. Okay? My mother used cold water to wake me up in the morning to pray. Sometimes he slapped. Pa! Come and pray. I will stood there and do a maladie. You must pray by force. Even though it was a crude method. <laughs> but you see, the same mother who did all, who did all those efforts and trained me, beat me, every time. One day the enemy struck him, struck her on the leg, and she was crawling like a, like a, like a, like a baby on the ground. Couldn't move there. Because of the training I already got, I stood at the gate and said, Sit down, lose my mother right now, let her go. And the enemy left her alone. My mother was recovered. I have been sharpened. And so your, the assignment is, you see, children, children are a heritage of the Lord. In other words, it's, it's called assignment from the Lord. You don't just bash children all over the place and feel everywhere like rats with children, and they are not going anywhere. If it's only one you can train, or two you can train, get them, do everything to put them on the way of the Lord. Train them in the way of the Lord, and then when they grow, they will not depart. People are rushing to have children, to compete with that person. How old are you picking? How old pass How many you get? Two. I get 15. <laughs> so, I get 15. 15. 15. Rotten, 15. Rotten. I, I pass you for picking. You never born? I don't born. Where, where? I born. See, no purpose. The, people, the, the parent doesn't have purpose. She doesn't have purpose. And so that's why you see they, they are dying like chicken. Just die like chicken. They die aimlessly. They die purpose, purposeless. So but what they are doing as in this ministry is to train you so that you can have vision. You can have purpose. You can have purpose for your life and if you are married for your family. That your family can come out different from other people there. You see, don't you see Nehru Nigerians are producing children? Look at WAEC. Look at uh, you want to go to you know, university. In those days, you can, you can uh, they can give you admission to universities before the jam was introduced. You got admission in the of Zuka, you got admission in the you can you can you, you, you want to choose to choose. But now, for you to even get admission to a Nigerian university, and when you're in university, you enter, you stay there. My younger sister's son, who went to, if you, unless it's a private university, it's a public university, you don't know when you're going to graduate. You go there as a small boy, you, by the time you grow, you already have goatee, where you, you can graduate because of strike. You grow, there be plenty where you can graduate from university. If you don't know your God now, you can't make it in this country. It's not possible. So, but you see what we are doing now is but when you know your God and you are, have, you are pursuing your purpose in the midst of whatever chaos in the Nigerian economy or Nigerian polity, you will be shining inside. I'm telling you right now. Whatever you need, oh supply it. Children are assignment from God, assignment, it's not only just give back to anyhow. Look at it now. Then let's do one more, one more. Let's just do one more. Then we, then we, can, we can just close, okay? 
Another wrong reason is what they call the bound. People want to get married because what is called the bound. The bound. The bound, the more the bound is uh, you are marrying to prove a point. Somebody who jilted you. Maybe you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend and the one jilted you and said, no, I need to marry by, by July so I can show him, show that guy. I'm marketable. Can't just mess me up like that. I'm going, away. I'm going to marry. So they marry what is called the bound. In other words, you have gone through some problem before for, from somebody else or a relationship before and you have not allowed yourself to get healed before you enter another one. And what happens is that when you don't allow yourself to get healed for the relationship that is broken, it affects you because you are carrying the wound. You are carrying the hurts and the pains of that relationship into another one. So somebody else now has to deal with pain that you went through with somebody else that he doesn't know. I'm not sure if you got this one. You don't repeat it. Now look at it. I said, this is it. This is it. You are in a relationship. It may not be marriage. It's always marriage. Sometimes it could be you are dating somebody, you want to get mad at the person, and the person hurts you and jilted you. Now, the, the, when somebody is jilted, that means somebody will abandon you, it's very painful. Your heart is bleeding. It affects you. Your heart is bleeding. And what it does is this. It's, it's, a, sign that you, it's a sign of being rejected, that somebody rejected you. And so when you are rejected, it affects you. It's a wound. There's a wound in your inside. And that wounds, if you don't give it time to heal and don't allow the Holy Ghost to comfort you and heal you, and you try to enter another relationship in an attempt to solve that one, you're in trouble. Maybe you need to get a tip, you can get it, it will be clear to, clear to you. But what I, the point I'm making is that you, your, your reason for getting to another one, no, 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 is so that you can deal with the hurt of the past. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you made a mistake in the past, let the past go. Let go the past. Nobody here who doesn't have a past, except the baby that's a, a, a fetish baby, that's just born. Everybody has got a past. It is a foolish thing for you to allow your past to tie you down because of the things you have gone through before. Whatever you have gone through in the past is supposed to be a testimony for your future. Even when the relationship has already been God's point, this God's point, don't live in the past. Make it a testimony for your future. Hallelujah. Uncle, what is on the table? Okay. Let's just do one more. One more go. go okay? Let's just do one more. Out, out, uh, people marry, people are wrong reasons. One key wrong reason is why people get married to people. Wrong reason to get married is the look. Look. Physical structure. Okay? Who marry, marry because of size, size of the body. Whether he has backside, he has you know, statistics. Okay? There are things that people use to, as a reason to get them married. Okay? Now, uh, it, nothing is permanent. I don't get what I'm saying now. Nothing in this life is permanent. Some people say, when somebody did the best, just like, look at you like this. If you come down with time after the child bath, no breast can stand like this when I will not come back after coming after the child bath. You can say that. So if the reason why you're somebody the breast like you look local tree, it's coming down. So make sure that when the breast comes down, you still like the person. I think you understand now. Because anything, nothing is permanent. Figure A can become figure 15. You get what I'm saying now? Say, your guy, if you go, you're doing catwalk, catwalk. When the bone, you know, go, you have things bogging on different places. And you ought to be ready to say, well, this is, are you the one? Say, me, oh. <laughs> I don't want to give for you, not say me. So you need to know that there are, there are much more serious reasons than just these outward things that change. He, my wife, got married to me because boy, I used to have Afro, Afro before. Afro. I used to wear Afro. He, the reason why he married me, she went me was because of Afro now. So Afro is shining no more. Afro is gone. We tried to arrest it. He didn't refuse to be arrested. And I said, What? I said, So, do you see one man without my Afro? He has to ask that question. Because nothing is permanent here. Things change, human beings change, challenges come, storms of life come. And then there are changes that take place. You see, that's why tomorrow, I mean, when we're doing the next one, we're going to look at the right reasons 
The right reasons. We we'll told some of them today. We we'll would look at the right reasons why you get married. I've not even finished what is the wrong reasons yet. But then we need to stop today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good. So we'll take just a few questions. If you want to ask the questions, you can raise up your hand and ask the questions. Because you didn't have the Holy Spirit inside, inside like you, like you now. Yes, sir. Yes. So is it is it right that I should ask for same sign? Absolutely to... not. Because you are now a mobile container of the Holy Ghost. So the lady is right here. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Abraham's servant was not a spirit-filled Christian. He was operating in the light, small light he has. You're like Gideon. Gideon said, if you so, so, Gideon put the fleece. Gideon was in the Old Testament. He didn't have the Holy Ghost in your inside. So Gideon could do a the sign. But we are not led by sign. We are led by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, so the yeah. reason why I ask is yeah. mostly when you, you come in contact with other Christian girls yeah, and yeah. you tell them it's something you feel right inside. Okay. There is nothing to ask you. What is the sign that God has said? Sorry. You belong to me or I'm your wife. Or you say, no, there is no sign, but it's something you feel right inside based on the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And you'll be like, no, they have to feel the same or there must be a sign to connect you people. What good, will you do good in question, that case? Good question, good question. The thing is this, number one, it's, it's simple. If it's God and the person is spiritual, the person will have a witness. That's what we call witness. That's a witness. You see, the, the, when, you, when you are trying to get married to somebody or believe God is leading you to marry somebody and you talk to the person, that person must have a witness. If she doesn't have a witness, then don't go to that relationship. It's not even good. Now, if she's asking for a sign, that, is, that means she's not trained. She's not in a good church where she's trained. People who are not trained, they are just churchgoers. They don't have any trade. They, are, they believe in science, science and it's just science and wonder. Whatever they can see, they are cruel eye. No, the display, display of you know. people. When you are not trained, display will carry you, get you carried away. Do you understand now? If I, I watch some television message programs, me and my wife, just, you, know, this, uh, you are just you know, this is my TV. Some people they are displayed, I just, I just laugh. Because you know what? You already got, already got training. Where is somebody who's not trained? They are not trained. That means that you don't have substance inside. So those things get so carried away. They, they, that kind of person is looking for signs because she's not trained. But a trained child of God is not looking for any sign. It's really the, the witness, the peace of God, the witness of the Holy Spirit. That peace is enough. You know you are going through this and there's a witness. Good. Another question. Now, assuming that two are married and on the line, that is a mistake. Yes. And he tried to amend that mistake. Yes. It couldn't work. Can yes. that person remarry to that one? It's a, it's a very interesting question. Depends depending on, on if you, depending on the on the circumstance of your break. You are married, the, the married relationship broke broke, and then two of you are divorced. You are divorced. Two of you are divorced. Yes. There's none that stops you. You can get married. Depending on the circumstances, you got us now. For instance, now your, your wife is, is snoring. You don't like him to be snoring. It's a mistake. You don't like somebody snoring, and then you divorce the person. Do you, go, do you understand now? I have understand. So that is not a reason. Okay, there are specific, I will still come to that one. I will, in the course of this training, I will talk about divorce. Okay? Divorce and the marriage. Okay. If the woman is the one that left you, that's better for you. Okay? You can easily marry. Okay? And there are circumstances that are involved that can make you to leave a woman based on scripture. If you stay with those scriptures, those, those are in the scripture, you are, you are covered. Okay? okay? Or she abandons you, better for you. Okay, good. He made mention of counseling here. Yes, counseling. He said, um, I want to ask that after counseling, when you are counseling as you're going to marry, yes. then after counseling, is it possible for you to like, you discover that you don't want to continue with your relationship? Is it possible like that? That's what I should do. It's in your, it's in your, it's in your outline. That is better for, okay, you didn't came late. Okay, you came yeah. late. Oh, okay, no, okay. I didn't know. I, I, wasn't, I was here since. I just well, we, we discussed it in the outline. We said it's better for you to counsel it quick, quick, and run. Okay. You understand that? <laughs> That it's better for you to break it before the enter, before you enter, enter, enter it. So it's a good thing. We won't advise you that it's a good thing. That will be honest with yourself. 
Oh, no, this thing cannot work. The cancer is supposed to give you a mirror. This thing not work. Oh, yeah. Shake hand, shake hand. Bye bye. Go and look for another person. Do you get what I say now? That's what the counseling does. So that you don't go and enter another one. Okay. You get it now. Good. So you, have, you don't don't manage it. Don't one thing you must not manage is marriage. Don't manage marriage. Simply just manage. Make just manage your marriage. Eh, eh, eh. Don't manage job. You get what I say. You don't manage marriage. <laughs> you can manage job. You can manage a wear clothes that is not good, but you don't manage your marriage because it can destroy your life completely. That's what that was I shared. But what I always share, the fact that somebody had a child for you, he had a child for you. You don't mean doesn't mean I go to buy the person. You can take care of the child. Do everything, take out the child, and ask God to show you your wife or your husband. You know, because, I know for my this girl, you know, because of this child, because of this child, you enter this, you destroy, you are dead. And the child will not be able to take out, take care of him. So it's understanding that you need. What you are doing tonight now, what you came out to do tonight, is you came to get understanding. The gods will be no faithfuls with strength like an eagle. Challenges in life and everything is way haywire. Only your snake can sustain you. Join Pastor and Mrs. Lotto at the Eagle Christian Center for Sunday worship service by 9 a.m. Tuesday Bible study and leadership meeting by 6 p.m. And Friday's prayer and healing service also by 6 p.m. Venue. Suit A14, Ground Floor, Roaches Plaza by Tantalizers, Wuse Zone 3, Abuja. For further details, call 0803-965-8883 or email eaglechristencenter at yahoo.com. Make it a date with the Lord and experience an atmosphere of God's presence at the Eagle Christian Center. God bless you. you, you and you run you know something stronger? It's strong spirit.